Hello! I started these videos because I wanted to have conversations that matter. I wanted to um, challenge the way we do and we think and, you know, be an excuse for people to just, you know, have the thought and maybe something would change, maybe not, but I do believe in the power of conversations. So I want to talk about the grey areas around sexual relationships, about those many, many situations in which there was not any legal crossing, but there was a lot of moral questions to be asked and there's a lot of people left behind bruised and with guilt and with shame and maybe not the ones that should. Um, and, and I want to tell a story of myself and not because I have any particular interest of my parents finding out my stories about being young and drunk, but because I think it matters. I think it matters how I felt about that story and how I carry all the weight and all the guilt and how feminists liberated me from that and made me realize that the reality was much more complex and that the person that you feel ashamed and guilty was him. So, yeah. So, when I was 21, so that story was when I was 21 years old, I went to a party with my friend and it was like a really exciting party and there was even famous people, imagine, and it was like dance and dressing up. And it was so good and we met a couple of guys one was your typical super sexy and you know confident guy and the other one was your classical friend of the confident guy and he was really funny and really dead on and of course I end up kissing like the really um, handsome guy I mean I was 21 and yeah like nothing else happened with that other guy but but he ended up inviting us to a party and we went and I met the other guy again the friend and we were laughing and we were talking a lot and and it was really fun and I never felt like I attracted to him but but it was funny and it was flirty and it was jokey so yeah we changed numbers and we start texting and and he was a bit insistent in the texting one night. I I actually found an email I sent to my best friend about that night exchange of emails and how awkward I was feeling. So I was uh, sending her what he said and then what I said and what he meant and what I meant, you know, all these complication things. But it was all like, oh, you know, my God, the guy can't get a no for an answer, lol. Um, not a big deal. We we kept texting the guy and I just ignore really the fact. And one night, um, shortly after, we went out drinking and dancing. And while I was very drunk, I thought it was a genius idea to call the guy because I was, you know, I was flirty. I was in the that moment of the night where you just want that attention and that reassurance. So I called the guy and the guy was in bed and he said that he wouldn't come and I was just like, ah, oh, you're so boring, come, I mean, you're lost and he decided to come. He said, okay, sure, I'll go. So he got dressed, left his house, drove for 40 minutes because he was outside Madrid and came and met me at Southside the bar. And as soon, as soon as I got in the car, I felt extremely awkward. I had that feeling in my stomach of, oh my God, what have I done? The guy was really, really serious. He was driving with his glasses on with my head, making him look even older. And he was really sober and very almost transactional. And I was there knowing that, you know what, I put myself into this shitty situation, so I may as well finish what I started and uh, it didn't really occur to me that I could have to say something I think I think it was by then it was very obvious for both of us what was happening so didn't see a clear out 
he drove the car, brought me to what he said it was his sister's house that was out of the city and the house was going to be rented and he has the keys. But I didn't know where I was and I was in a very empty house which could be anywhere. And to make things worse, we go to the room and the room has all the walls with mirror, like a huge mirror covering all the walls. And in my head, there were cameras behind that mirror and he was going to be recording everything and then sell it online. Why did I think that? I don't know. It seemed normal in the aseptic house while I was drunk. But I decided to protect myself, to make faces to the mirror so the guy could never release it um, because it would be a shame. So I was looking at the mirror and just, just rolling my eyes and doing funny faces and just nodding like, oh my God, so bad. Just making it very obvious that I was not enjoying it so he would never release it because then he would have been put in shame. That's what I thought. He would not be proud of his performance, so he would not release it. And I think now, how can you be having sex with somebody that literally is looking to a mirror and saying to the mirror how shit sex is and not realizing? I mean, how entitled and how selfish and how in your own ways you must be for letting that happen and not realize not noticing even so he finished thankfully as soon as he finished of course sex finished not that I was in the mood for anything else um and he went to just deal with the condom and all and I felt so upset sadly all the fear that I had was gone and I was just extremely upset I mean i I guess I always knew the guy was not going to kill me. But not that you ever know, I imagine. But but that was not my fear. And then suddenly, what, what was he going to do? What was he going to rape me? Of course not. So, so that was it. So he suddenly had no more power over me. And I felt ugh, dirty and guilty and sad and upset in so many levels. So I could just be rude with him. So I was very rude with him. I was just he asked me how sex was. I said shit. He was telling me about some football thing. I said I didn't care and it was pathetic. And to grow up. Um, and then I asked him to drive me home, which he did. And on the way I was just just to get out of here, like just don't touch me and just hating every inch of my body. I crossed the door, tell him I wish he had a nice life, make him very clear I didn't want to hear from him again, and went to my bed and cry. And I remember hating myself so much and and just feeling so stupid and coming back to the moment where I decided it was okay to call him and how could I be so stupid? And it took me years to realize that it was not my fault. That what happened that night was not my fault and I should not be the one coming home full of shil- full of guilt and shame. I mean, he was 12 years older than me. He was sober. He was the one driving and holding on the power, the physical power of what he could do with me. And yet, I mean, I was like... I was telling a mirror how bad sex was, and yet he let all that happen. He never once gave me an easy out. He never once checked if my body language was telling him that I was uncomfortable. He never once made me feel comfortable or part of it. It was like very clear with us that as soon as I make that phone call, he was entitled to come. He was entitled to sex and I had to provide with him because I put myself there. And it was very clear for both sides that I never, ever blamed him. I feel disgust. I mean, I, I, I didn't reply to his message. I felt even more unattracted to him. But I was never angry with him. And I always understood that what happened in his head was that I was flirty. He was flirty. We liked each other. I was asking for it. 
he came as per my request, we had sex, and then I become a weirdo. That's what happened, because in his head, I did not matter. The truth is that in his head, I was so a secondary part of the story that how I felt, my lack of power, my lack of say, my lack of comfort was not relevant in the story. And and I it took me a while to blame him for that and to think that, you know, not okay. We have to demand better. Men have to be held responsible for those things too. Men have to be the ones carrying the weight of understanding what's going on. I mean, with bigger power comes bigger responsibility and the age difference and the drunken severity difference and the car difference and, and all those things gave him power over me and he abused that power. So, so I think this is a message mostly for the good guys, you know, for all those guys. And I can't swear this guy thinks he's one of the good guys. Um, I can tell he, this guy it's repulsed about the idea of rape and abuse and, and all that. And he would never do that. But I think we have to make them think farther. I would love men to sit down and revisit their stories and think like, did I ever make her feel uncomfortable? Did I make, did I create an environment in which saying no was even a possibility? And which it was gonna be free of emotional charge? Did I push it too hard? And, and I think that's where we need to pivot. I have a daughter, I have a son, and don't get me wrong, I will tell Nora that getting in cars with strangers while drunk is not a good idea. But my parents did that too. I mean, it's never that we don't know that. That's never the problem. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to see it with Eric and I'm going to make sure he understands that consent has to be enthusiastic for both parts that he needs to make sure that w what he's sharing with the other person it's fun and it's enjoyable for both for both parts and that and that he has a responsibility to make the other person feel comfortable and okay so those are the conversations that we need to be talking having so i'm sure that if you are a woman you've been in situations in which you've thought you know what fuck it just let's do it and get over with it and you know, it's easier, it's just easier to just make them come than deal with the insistence and the aggressivity and the insulting and the back and forward and the pressure. Sometimes it's just easy to give in and, you know, move on. And that is not okay. That is not what we should be aiming for. And that is happening a lot. And it's happening still now. And this story was 12 years ago. I'm Today I'm the same age that this guy was when this happened to me and I know that I know better and I would do better and I will expect better from me but I don't know why I never expected better from him. I don't know why I thought it was okay. I don't know why the fact that he was a man made okay what he did when it would never be okay for me to do what he did to a 21 years old boy. So we need to demand better to men because we need to expect better from men because men are capable to be better than that. And um, yeah, so if you are the guy that I'm talking about in this story, uh, for any reason you end up listening to this and you want to have to talk uh, either online or offline about it, then please do reach out. And if you're a girl and this happened to you, and um, if you want to tell me how you dealt with it, or you're a man and has questions about these gray areas and you want to talk about them, anyway. If you want to have a conversation about any of these, please reach out because I genuinely believe in the power of conversation. I'm a big believer in the power of honest conversations that make us realize that maybe we weren't right after all, that maybe we can do better and be better. So yeah, that's me. Thanks for listening to my rant and I'll be here next week. Bye!